All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Carl Villacoba, and I'm the communications director for the Monmouth University Urban Coast Institute in New Jersey, but also a member of the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Data Portals technical team. Uh, today's webinar will basically break down into three parts. I'll give some general background on the portal project and who's involved with it, what it's used for. Um, then I'll go into a tour of the site and Marine Planner, which is our um, GIS mapping uh, application within the portal. Um, that'll take about 20, 25 minutes usually. And then we'll open it up to a Q&A session where we can talk about whatever you like. But we uh, will have a small group here today. So feel free to jump in at any point if there is something that you see that you'd like more information about or something um, that seems confusing. Uh, feel free to stop me and um, ask questions on the spot. I like to often start a portal presentation and put it in perspective by showing a picture like this, which is what everybody sees when they throw their chair in the sand come this time of year and stare it out at, at the ocean, this beautiful watery void. And you look at it and, and people think, you know, nothing's going on there. Look how peaceful that is. And there's actually been research that shows that that this calming view is good for your mental health. But the reality is the ocean is a very, very busy place. And especially here in the Mid-Atlantic, it's getting busier all the time. Um, you've got lots of recreational boating activity out there. You've got uh, the, the largest port on the East Coast in uh, New York and Newark, which constantly has cargo ships, tankers and the like coming in. You've got uh, commercial fishing, very busy out here. Um, this is kind of the, the capital of the undersea communications telecom um, industry for, for um, uh, overseas cables that connect here to New Jersey, Long Island. You've got offshore wind on the way, which is very significant and much more. And what the portal does is help you uh, visualize all of these things and how they relate to each other and in some cases, how they might conflict with one another. And based on those visuals, um, people in ocean management decision uh, roles can make uh, more informed decisions. And people who want to learn more about the ocean can help contribute to those decisions by doing analysis on their own. So what's on the portal? Currently, about 5,000 or more map layers organized under about a dozen themes. But as you'll see, uh, that, that sounds like a big number and a scary number, but we have it organized in um, a, a very easy way to get through that um, even uh, students in, you know, middle school, high school have no problem with, or that, that's at least what we hope. We, we work very, very hard at that. We have some instructional and educational resources to help people um, get through things, in, including a portal blog, um, an ocean stories section, which I'll show you. Um, a calendar of upcoming events. We hold uh, semi-monthly webinars. We also provide tools for users to share maps and collaborate together in groups. So if they um, have projects that they're working on together, it just makes it that much more easy. Who is the portal team? Currently, it's Monmouth University, where I sit, Rutgers University, the Nature Conservancy, our developer EcoTrust, which is based in Portland, Oregon, and we work under the guidance of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council on the Ocean. Um, the portal has been developed with grant support from the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, NOAA, and the states of Virginia and New York, I should say Commonwealth of Virginia. Who is Marco? If you don't know, um, Marco is a consortium that was formed by the governors of the five Mid-Atlantic coastal states who we define as New York, uh, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia to work together on ocean issues. Uh, it's currently chaired by the state of New York, but that changes in just a couple of days and the chair rotates to Delaware. And if you wanna find out more about Marco and all the great things that they work on, go to midatlanticocean.org. One of the big things the portal did was take a lot of data um, that's important to mid-Atlantic users that was scattered in what seems like a hundred different 
government websites and, and industry websites and, and offices and bring it under one umbrella. Um, and we work very closely with some of the other portals out there, including the federal level portal, which is called the Marine Cadaster, marinecadaster.gov. Um, and we in, ingest a lot of their data, but we only take in the stuff that has um, complete relevance to mid-Atlantic users. You know, we don't need uh, layers about Hawaiian whales on our portal. Um, so we, we select it carefully. We work very closely with our partners in the Northeast, New England at NROC, um, which has another great portal um, to create lots of data sets and share things that um, are of common interest to our users. <clears throat> and then finally, there are um, some state portals in our area, which we uh, take some data from and we share a lot of our data with. So lots of great partnerships in place there and we work very closely with all of these entities. A couple of examples of how the portal is used. Offshore wind is definitely a major driver of a lot of the um, uh, data that we've added to the portal in the last few years. Um, we work very hard to keep this up to date. Um, right there on that screen, you can see the, the aqua bluish green type layer um, to the right, which are upcoming or areas that are being considered by BOEM for proposed lease sales for offshore wind in the future. Um, and we just added them a few days ago. You see uh, to the left off the coast of South Jersey, um, some of the uh, lease areas that um, are, have been leased through the, the federal government, BOEM. So we have put the capability in the hands of ordinary users, keeping in mind, this is a free and fully publicly accessible website. Um, so any user out there has access to the same data that federal government, um, federal agencies, state agencies, and others have to um, create their plans and uh, you know do their ocean management work. Um, so uh, you know we we work very hard at that. Another example, we work with the Coast Guard um, on routing measures and helping it do uh, public outreach on some of those measures. So, for example, uh, just a few days ago. There um, was a Chesapeake Bay port access route study. <clears throat> and there's a series of them that have been um, being done along the East Coast, basically taking a look at, hey, what are our projections for future traffic into these ports, given offshore wind, given um, infrastructure changes at the ports and just trends in, in maritime and, and um, the cargo industry. And um, so they're designing some shipping lanes and other measures that um, they hope will help um, accommodate all of that. So uh, people can go on the portal, take a look at these, um, share their comments with the, the Coast Guard based on what they see, even through sharing links to maps they've created on the portal. Um, submarine cables I mentioned earlier are still, uh, you know, people think in this wireless world they, they that that's a thing of the past, but Undersea cables still carry a good 95% plus of um, all overseas traffic, uh, you know, from the, from the US to Europe, to um, Africa and then all over the world. Um, and they, you know, land in places like Virginia Beach, which is a, a new place um, to land cables. And as you see, uh, that that's the, the world's largest naval base there in Norfolk. So um, they had to, uh, when they created this cable just a couple of years ago, um, and they, that, that's actually Facebook and Microsoft, which created this one up to the north here. Um, they used the portal or portal data was used to help dodge some of these military training areas. Um, some of the areas that are being looked at uh, for offshore wind turbines, areas where bottom tending fishing gear is in high concentrations so that the cables won't get um, snagged on lines. So the portal has been used for um, that and I'm sure will be in the years ahead as um, power cables are laid connecting to some of these offshore wind areas. Um, another pretty neat example has been um, the, the resurgence of humpback whales off the coast of New York, New Jersey in these areas. 
which is a great story. We're all very happy about that. But there are some considerations there about um, conflicts with all of that um, shipping traffic and other users. And so um, Gotham Whale, which is a, an educational um, and whale watching group based out of New York and, and the New Jersey area, has done some research using portal data about where those areas are that um, the conflicts might be heaviest and have um, done some uh, public, public outreach around that subject. We've also seen the portal used more and more as an educational tool, a classroom tool, which is really great because it's not something that we necessarily foresaw when we started um, uh, creating it. But um, as we've continued, you know, keeping in mind that we do have some of these younger and, and lay users, uh, we really, it, it's just a great reminder that we've got to keep things simple. And um, hopefully you'll agree that they are, as I show you the portal now. And I'll close out of that. And, okay. Can you guys see my screen now? So if you give me a holler. Portal homepage. Yes. Excellent. Yep. No, sorry, okay. I had to unmute. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so this is the portal homepage, portal.midatlanticocean.org. And I'd encourage you guys, feel free to uh, log on to it right now and you can follow along as I start showing you things if you're um, curious to try them out. Um, as I said before, completely free, publicly accessible website. Um, there is an option if you want to re become a registered user where it unlocks certain tools, basically ones that allow you to save your work. <clears throat> and I'll show you some of that in a little while, but for the most part, anyone can get on here anytime and have access to all this stuff. Now, the way to get to the mapping application is to click map or down here in this uh, cell to the bottom left where it says view maps. But before I do that, I did wanna just point out a few features that um, people may find useful. So if you're a regular user of the portal, this news blog page is a great place to um, check in, find out what's new. Um, we have lots of content here. Anytime there's a new significant uh, data release or tool upgrade, you can find out about it here. Um, so here's one I mentioned that uh, Coast Guard data that I added just a couple of days ago. And so you can find out uh, the backstory for it, where you can get more information on it, um, how you use it, where you'd find it, and so forth. Um, so there's lots of good stuff like that in that page. Um, also under that news directory, the ocean stories. Um, this is kind of a, a digital magazine meets story map application. And there's all kinds of um, neat stuff we've done with this over the years. <clears throat> and um, what you'll see here are, um, you get this splash with a, a map right there. And as you scroll down, it tells a story. In this case, I spent an overnight trip with some um, scallop fishermen out of Point Pleasant Beach and just kind of did a trip diary and, and talked to them and found out, you know, things that are on their mind and um, what it's like to do their job and, and did a story about it. And there's some video components to it. There's photos and stuff. And you see that map up there. And as you scroll down, the map can change uh, to um, help tell the story. And the story helps explain what people see in the map. So it's kind of a, a neat educational feature, um, a way to get um, new people interested in the portal. The calendar of events. So we put some stuff up here like uh, the un announcement about today's webinar, future webinars, um, conferences and the like that have to do with marine spatial planning um, or things that we're working on. People can submit us uh, th th their notices for these things and we're happy to add them. Um, data, the data catalog. I'll get in into this a little more uh, in a few minutes, but this is a way if you want to browse through all of the map data that we have in a list form. And this help tab up here, um, using the portal, 
we've got a lot of tutorials here about um, things that, that I'll be showing you. So if you forget, you know, a couple of days from now and want to go back and find out how I use the drawing tool or something like that, you can find a short video or uh, an infographic or something like that here. Um, plenty of helpful stuff. This webinar will be uh, posted, the recording will, on our webinars page um, after the fact, probably in about, you know, maybe even by the end of the day, but certainly this week. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump into Marine Planner itself. Again, clicking on that map tab up there. And by default, it, show, it brings you into this ocean base map. There are others. Uh, so you can change it to a federal nautical chart if that's your preference, um, a satellite map, a street map, um, a, just a plain gray one. Um, a lot of this is preference, you know, like the, the ocean map is one where you get to see the shelf break and the canyons and, and some of the ocean features when you zoom into it. <clears throat> and um, that might be useful. Some of the other ones show more cities and roads and things if that's useful. But sometimes it's just a matter of the, the map layer that you're interested in is a certain color and it contrasts better with one of the maps and makes it easier to use. So. We, we try to keep some options on there. Um, our data, the vaunted 5,000 layers that I told you about before, is all organized here under these categories. And um, you can click on any one of them for a drop down. And um, I'll just click a whole bunch here just to give you a sense. And all you have to do is click on the map layer or that circle to show you how they uh, work here. Okay, so here's a whole bunch, and you can look at any one or any number of combinations that you like. And once they're activated, you can click on the legend to find out more information about what you're seeing, or click on this active tab, which gives you some options for um, how the data is presented and to manipulate it. So uh, they are layers, and you can switch around which one is the top layer and the bottom by just dragging down. Um, you know, so, so something like um, um, the OCS boundaries. Let's say you didn't want that on the top anymore. You wanted that on the very bottom. You could do that. You can mute it. You can um, take any of these layers and darken them or lighten them like that. You can click the X to remove it all together you can click uh, the little green eye icon for some shortcuts, including um, a, a direct data download button, um, a link to view metadata for that layer, and a link to uh, the, the source, basically the agency that provided it or, or um, uh, business or whatever the case may be. <clears throat> and you always get this a uh, brief blurb here, which explains what it is that you're seeing. And then you can click read more, which will take you to the direct data catalog entry for that layer where you get a more in-depth answer about it. Um, there's sometimes more um, options up there, including those data downloads and metadata ones like this tiles. So if you have your own in-house GIS capability, you can copy the uh, service links and directly ingest this into your own desktop um, uh, GIS capabilities. Um, to the extent we can, we always try to make things downloadable so you can have them for yourselves. There are some exceptions to that where there's um, privacy issues to, to uh, consider where we have certain data, but um, to, the, to the extent we can, we view ourselves as a public information effort and want to make it um, available the best we can. So down there we have fishing, another major interest. Uh, so some of the layers in here, artificial reefs, which believe it or not is one of our most oft clicked layers. Um, and you can click on the screen for that one. It'll give you a pop-up telling you what the name of that reef is. Um, 
I think the presence of that suggests that we have a lot of recreational fishing users um, who come to the portal. Two of the big um, data sets in here, commercial fishing VMS, which is essentially, um, it's like easy pass from the vessel that um, signifies its position. And we take all of that data over the, the, the span of a few years and create um, maps that summarize it by catch. So um, for example, we'll go down to um, scallop and we present these in a few ways. Number one, um, we'll look at 2015, 16, which this first one shows everything. And you can see uh, the transit coming out of the ports and going to all of these areas. But we also present um, the under five knots, which shows slower traffic only, which I think is a better simulation of actual fishing effort and where the actual fishing takes place. So if that's more useful for you. And then the other big group of fishing data we have is VTR for vessel trip reports that are filed by uh, captains. And um, we also call this our communities at sea data. So for example, dredge, you're capturing scallops, um, uh, the um, um, clam industry and some others. You click on that one for 11 through 15 and we go, we have five year windows of this going back to 2000 and we're working on <clears throat> trying to get the uh, 16 through 2000 up pretty soon. Cool thing about this, um, we call it communities at sea because you can click on the map and get a pop-up that shows you all of the communities, the ports that rely on that area at sea. So for example, this one red area out here, which is a, um, a major area, Barnegat, Cape May, Massachusetts, Virginia, New York, um, Connecticut, all visited that spot. So, um, you know, if, if you were doing some kind of work, making any kind of decisions related to that general area, you would know, hey, we should talk to people in Barnegat and Cape May and, and some of these other areas. Another thing, um, you can click directly on these ports, which show where the uh, fishing vessels came from and get some stats like what were the total trips um, for that uh, gear type in that year range, um, the percentage of the regional total, total fisher days, you know, considering all the, the, the people on the, on the vessel. Um, so some interesting economic stories to be told in there. Um, scrolling down, fishing communities at sea by port. Um, this is that VTR data, but we have a search widget here, which allows you to look and generate maps only for the specific ports. Um, so I showed you that one 11 through 15 for dredge, and I clicked on Point Pleasant. Let's say we wanted to just see a map of Point. Here you go. And that shows 90% of the uh, fishing effort for um, that gear type in that particular range. So another way of, of looking at things and um, telling that story. Marine life, kind of a similar breakdown where we have big um, groups of marine life in this catalog. And then, you know, the, the species specific one, which is a, a search widget, which gives you the ability to look at, um, you know, a specific species. So marine life, we've got birds, um, corals, fish data, um, seagrasses, sea turtles, um, marine mammals. So for example, let's say um, you wanted to see all baleen whales abundance for um, the mid-Atlantic. And these actually stretch up into um, New England, the Northeast coast as well. You can get that information. Or if you wanted to just look at humpbacks, you would scroll down to the Marine Life Library 
and click that drop down, type it in. And for these humpback or, or all those marine mammal uh, maps, they'll actually give you options for the month of the year. Um, so it is June. We can find out where they typically are this time of year. And you can see that. And as you um, check those out, you can see that in the, uh, the, the coldest winter months, they tend to be further south. Um, in the warmer months, you know, right now they're kind of migrating up north and you'll see them heavier in the Gulf of Maine and those types of areas. So it's pretty neat to see uh, how that all changes. Uh, scrolling down, maritime. We're looking essentially at lots of human use data here, including um, vessel traffic patterns by different vessel types, um, routing measures, um, stuff about undersea cables, um, sand data, you know, for, um, for human use. So AIS, again, kind of a, like an, a, an easy pass type of application that, that um, pings uh, the infrastructure and other ships for uh, vessels positions. And we take all of that and each year aggregated and create these maps. So you can see vessel traffic patterns for all vessels carrying AIS transponders. Um, so you can see, you know, the, the heavy concentrations of ships using the lanes coming in and out of the port up there. Also some coming out of the, um, the smaller ports like Point Pleasant, Barnegat, Shark River. Um, or you can break that down just to see where cargo is. Um, fishing vessels, tugs and tows, and a few other different options. Um, one neat thing here is we've, we've also, for each of these years, at least going back to 2015, have these monthly data sliders. So you can click that, click the button view slider, where it allows you to animate automatically or um, toggle through the month of the year or the different uh, vessel type. Um, so sometimes these take a minute to load. So I preloaded one up here. And just one example, um, fishing, which is um, an example where the vessels change quite a bit from month to month. And you can click the button to animate it. Just give it a second to uh, cycle through and load. Again, this is one where um, it's loading so much. It's basically got all the different maps loaded all at once. So it takes uh, sometimes a good 20 seconds to get in gear. There it goes, or it's starting. I'm also on a Wi-Fi here and um, competing for Zoom signal with my daughter downstairs who's taking an online class. So anyway, it's a bit slow, I think, for that reason. Um, but there, there we go. And you can see now it's in the colder winter months, slows down a bit. Then June, July picks up. So another neat way to look at that. And we have, you know, cargo, passenger vessel, tug tow, um, private boats, sailboats, um, lots of options. Um, close out of that one. Moving on to um, oceanography, so basically the physical prop, um, characteristics of the ocean, lots of data on um, front, front locations uh, for several years by season, um, storms, so historic uh, hurricane tracks and things like that, um, sea surface temperatures or currents and temperatures we have available here including this one, which we worked with Maracuse to create a uh, monthly slider of. And um, so you can animate that and see how it changes throughout the months. Now we get into the summer, it heats up. 
cools down. So we, uh, we've got probably about 10 different um, data types that we've applied to those um, toggle and slider tools, you know, all um, stuff that has a, a time series element to it. Renewable energy, obviously very important. Um, so here's all of our offshore wind area, uh, area map collections. Um, so the, the two main ones, the uh, BOEM Renewable Energy Lease Areas. Let me zoom out here so we can get the full mid-Atlantic picture. Um, so those are areas that are currently leased. Beneath that, the wind planning areas, which are um, areas that are being considered for leases and are at various stages of um, uh, public comment and examination. Um, just released the other day, the wind energy uh, proposed lease sale areas off uh, for the New York bite and public comment, I believe, is open through um, mid-August on that one. So um, anyone's interested in that, you can look on the portal at them in combination with all of our other stuff and submit your thoughts to uh, BOEM. Moving down, um, projects under review. So we've got a few different uh, drop downs here that basically uh, are organized by um, how far along they are. So under review, South Fork, um, which is off the coast of Rhode Island and New York, um, permitted projects, Vineyard Wind up there currently, um, operational energy projects. So there's two in the Mid-Atlantic at the moment. One is the Block Island one off Rhode Island. And the second is off the coast of Virginia, uh, which is the, the pilot test turbine area. I believe two operational turbines at the moment. Uh, scrolling, well, looks like I skipped one, recreation data. So we have some neat stuff all done by PGIS and surveys here. Um, the coastal recreation survey was one that we did in partnership with the Surfrider Foundation. So you can click on shore-based activities, essentially beach hot, hot spots. Got to zoom in a bit closer to um, see what they are. Uh, surface water activities, so surfing, bodyboarding and the like, and there's a few others. Um, beneath that, the recreational boater survey, which uh, Mammoth and Marco did in partnership with each other a few years ago. And it shows recreational um, points where people said they like to do different categories. So the green ones are fishing, uh, the orange ones are other activities. Um, you can see scenic enjoyment, wildlife viewing and, and more. So um, that's one category that we're um, actively looking at ways to update and add some new things to. Seafloor habitat. Um, we have the artificial reefs layers down here as well. Um, but also bathymetry data. So looks at um, what the uh, topography of, of the ocean floor is like. Um, and some of these are in pretty high resolution. And, um, you know, others are, are really focused on only certain spots, but there's a lot of different options in there. Uh, security, we're looking at Declassified naval data, essentially. Um, two of the big ones, restricted areas and danger zones. Um, those of you who might know or, or uh, live in the Monmouth County area, like I do know uh, Naval Weapons Station Earl right here, has some um, parameters and you can't enter uh, too close to this dock up there, but there's other spots, certainly as you go down further south toward Virginia, lots of activity. Um, but there's also in here the locations of unexploded bombs, including entire zones where they were dumped after World War II and so forth. And you can click for pop-ups for in information about all of these things. Uh, beneath that, socioeconomic, we do have some information basically about the economic importance of the ocean to the mid-Atlantic region. So a few of them 
um, ocean employment as a percent of county employment. And this was done through um, a Marco study a couple of years ago. Essentially, pound for pound, how important is the ocean to your county? And you can click for a pop up and, you know, this one right, right there, nearly 30 percent. Um, Cape May County, New Jersey, another big one I would expect, 24 um, percent. You know, Virginia Beach and so forth. But you can also get this one's pretty neat. And this is based on NOAA's Eno data, Ocean Economics GDP, um, which I believe is census data. And um, you get right there how many businesses in that county, according to 2017 census data, um, were directly dependent on the ocean. And you nearly get 11,236 uh, million dollars of wages. Um, or uh, before I, I should say that's how many jobs, 10,000 establishments, 645. And there's a link here to get some direct information about that county um, through NOAA's site. And finally, water quality data. This is a brand new one that we, we just added recently uh, because we expect to be adding a lot more information on this in the future. So um, EPA attains assessment areas. You can click on that um, for basically um, an, an indication of whether or not a water body has been classified as having any kind of a pollution problem. And um, it'll tell you that. And then you can click on a link here for its How's My Waterway report card, um, which will tell you specifically what problems, if any, that, that area has. Um, so finally, I'm just going to show you a couple of tools that we have available, and then I'll, I'll open it up to questions. Um, the My Planner tab right here is a way to save a lot of your work. So um, if you want to create a bookmark, let's say you've created a, a new map that shows um, annual offshore wind speed, and you want to put that in combination with um, renewable energy, we'll say um, all of the active renewable energy leases. You want to zoom it in uh, close to um, Delmarva. And you want the wind layer darkened up a bit, and same with the other one. And you can even change the base map to make it satellite. You want to save that. What you do, and you have to be um, a registered user for this, go to My Planner, click New to create a bookmark. We'll call it um, Wind Speeds and Lease Areas. And um, if you wanted to, you can type in a blurb describing what it is that you've done. Add bookmark. And now, Let's say you're coming completely fresh into um, My Planner or Marine Planner, and you hit My Planner. I have a ton of bookmarks, so they take a minute to load. One of these days, I've got to empty that out. Wind speeds and lease areas test. Click on that. Boom, it'll load it up and even get you, um, you know, straight down to uh, the zoom where it should. Um, and, you know, the darkness, the base map, all that good stuff. Um, through my planner, you can also draw things. So let's say um, you thought there was something significant. You wanted to draw a shape to commemorate that, um, this particular area uh, was the one that had the greatest combination of wind speed and area for leasing. You can draw that. Next, provide a name, um, wind speed, shape, and you can save it. 
and these you can actually share just like the bookmarks. So um, a few different options for that. For your bookmarks, um, you can get a short URL and directly email it to people, or you can share it in a group. And um, I'll show you how to do that, how to create one. In data, if you go to groups, you can create your own. We'll call it um, How Tuesday Test. You can add an image if you want, a description, um, and I'll just say files for June 29th. Create the group. There it is. Now I'm going back. My planner. I want to share that map to it so that everybody who joins that group will now have access to that thing that I created. Share bookmark, groups, um, how Tuesday test, check it off, share. Now that will be there. And so will the shape that I'm about to share. Now with shapes, you can actually download them too. So again, if you have your own GIS capabilities, you can export it um, and, and keep it. So I'm gonna share that into here, boom, share it. And now if I go back to that group page, right here, you'll see both of them are in there. And so um, if, you know, any coworkers that you're working on something with could join that, they'll automatically have access to that and, and save you a whole lot of emailing and um, other uh, aggravations you might have. So I am going to stop there and open it up. I've talked a lot, I've got about 15 minutes left and um, see what questions people have. Is there anything you're wondering if we have? Carl, I'm curious. I know you said you consolidate the other available portals into all one place. Is there any data that we generate or is this all like a pooled resource from existing resources and data out there? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, um, it's a combination. And I like to say that um, when you go to our homepage and we've got that expression there, every map tells a story. Um, every map has a story in this case. Um, there are, put it, put it this way, a lot of the, um, the, the foundational stuff um, that is good across all portals that, that the federal government produces, uh, we take from the marine cadaster. So things like the shipping lanes, um, aids to navigation, um, things like that. But when it comes to regional data, that is all being, um, for the most part, generated by us um, or in, in partnership with other groups. Um, you know, the Marine Cadaster doesn't need um, necessarily data that, that's only specific to the Mid-Atlantic. Um, so we create a, a lot of our own stuff and especially in combination with NROC because there's just so much that we have in common, especially when it comes to like fishing data and um, some of the, the maritime stuff. Um, when I showed the communities at sea before, you could see, uh, you know, you click on an area off the New Jersey shore, but you see so many hits from Connecticut and Massachusetts and stuff. So it really is a very interstate thing. And we're aware of that um, and work with them very closely. Uh, so it, it all depends on the, the specific map, but um, yes, we create a lot of stuff. We um, ingest a lot and we uh, work together to create some things um, with our partners. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions? Are there any, um, you know, let me point out also quickly a couple of tools I, I neglected to mention. Top right, we have some buttons up there, um, a print export tool. So uh, if you wanted to 
print, it'll automatically um, generate a PDF of the screen that makes for better printing. Um, you can generate short URLs from that, or I, I should say the short URL generator is right under that. Um, we've got this linear measurement tool. So if you wanted to click and say, how far is it from the Jersey shore to uh, the start of the Hudson Canyon out there, finish that up and it'll tell you in kilometers, miles and nautical miles. And we've also got this, oh, this is kind of a, a key thing, um, an ArcRest layer input tool. So if you have um, a map layer from an outside website, anything, it, it doesn't have to be ocean. It could be something on land related to urban planning or transportation or you name it. Um, as long as you have that, that service URL, you can drop that in here and the layer ID click and it'll automatically um, uh, overlay it on the portal, including its, its legend data and, and all the rest um, right on the spot. So that's pretty handy if you're trying to do something and there's some map that you wished we had that we didn't have it. Also down on the bottom, provide feedback. If you're ever using the portal, um, there's something that's not working and you want to report it to us. I get those and I promise you uh, I, I'll get back to you very quickly as soon as I can. And hopefully with the answer that whatever it is that you found is fixed. We're, we're always very happy when people let us know if there's any kind of a problem. Hey, Carl, this is Judy with a question. Sure. I was playing around with the tool on my other screen while you were talking and I would like to know how relevant the information is if you put in high level data layers. So for instance, I put in a whole lot of marine species and different types of habitats and combined it with all vessel traffic and got something so dense that I don't know how to interpret it. Where is the most relevance? What is the relevance of large scale? Do you want to share your screen and, and uh, show I me what you've got? I, cl I closed it. Sorry, I didn't save it. I just closed oh, okay. it. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so to follow, uh, run that by me one more time. and maybe, Or tell me if there's um, if I can actually create the map for you on the screen. So, and sure. I um, went to Maritime and I got all vessel traffic. Or okay. Marine, okay, stay with Marine Life, whatever. Oh, I'm, I'm on Maritime now, so all vessel traffic. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was the only one I... Uh, yes, I found that I could click the top one and got it. And right. then go back to Marine Life. Mm -hmm. And that I tried to get uh, all the different habitats and then um, essential fish habitat. Mm -hmm. And what else did I do? Um, demersal fish. And all cetaceans. Okay. Um, okay, fish. Demersal fish you chose? Mm hmm. Let's just try and get large groups. I think it's down at the bottom. Yeah. And what was the final one you, you said? Um, probably cetaceans, marine mammals, all cetaceans. Okay. All right. So there's a lot going on here. Um, this is, okay, and, and, and you were um, asking about the areas where there's the, the most overlap, essentially? I guess I am, I'm wondering whether I have got myself any good data that's uh, usable, or is this too okay. high? Level? So, um, you know, it's it's a tough one with with this many layers that are, are that busy. Um, you got to, I think, take some time to arrange them in a way that makes sense and tells the story that you're looking um, to tell. So, um, you know, this one, the, the vessel transit counts. If you were looking and wanted to figure out the areas where um, you know, abundance of 
uh, all cetaceans you know, has, has the most crossover. Uh, maybe one way you could do that is, you know, temporarily mute the others. And you can play with the toggle a bit and see, okay, it looks like offshore here, and I'm going to zoom out, is where there's the most activity for the marine mammals. Where would that intersect most heavily with um, the shipping traffic? And it kind of looks like right here, based on what you see. And then a, a piece of vessel traffic could be the commercial fishing boats themselves. So mm -hmm. where would they be based on the habitat that they're looking for? Um, I, I don't did not have a question, but you could see a number of them. I could see whale strikes. I could see um, mm -hmm. commercial fishing vessel damage to the habitat type. Yeah. I mean, so the there, answer there, is to define your question, I guess. It, it, um, I, I think there's, there's just a lot going on with these four ma maps in combination that, um, you kind of need to figure out, uh, what, what the question is that you're trying mm -hmm. to answer specifically, mm -hmm. uh, and, and which one, which ones of these things are the highest priority. Um, because the reality is if, if you turn on too much stuff at once, it, it gets all a bit murky. Mm -hmm. That's what I suspected and thank you for answering that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, there, there, so there are some tools like um, um, that Noah and, and others have built um, where they're more of an analysis tool where you can kind of draw a shape over just one part of the ocean and click on it and get like an instant high level analysis of, okay, in that square, there's how many ships pass through it? Um, what level of marine mammal life is there? Um, you know, and, and those kinds of things to, to get kind of that, that instant high level sense of, of what's going on out there. Um, you know, the portal doesn't do that um you know it, it's all about putting these maps in combination with each other and you know that there's there's there probably is some a limit to how much you can just show all at once uh with, but i mean you you can manipulate things quite a bit like i said uh by darkening things lightening them so just with that one example we can kind of see that there's um, a trail coming in off the uh, Hudson Canyon, drawing up towards New York. So this would be a certain area of interest right there. And maybe you draw, um, or you, you know, you put your vessel counts there, darken them a bit and see, okay, this area right here, and maybe you draw that, that shape to help kind of make that distinction. So lots of ways. Um, let's see, am I seeing a... That is so cool. Did I see a comment get left? Let's see, let's see chat. Okay. Um, any other questions out there? Calvin, you have anything? Uh, no, this, this has been very um, informative. I'm, I'm definitely learning, um, you know, some little things here and there. Uh, I've had some experience with fairly similar um, software, but this is, this is really good. Um, a lot more than I've had um, used before. Great. Well, you know, you can always uh, use the provide feedback form or um, the email at the bottom of the portal here, which is portal at midatlanticocean.org. You can always send to that and I'll be the guy who answers it. And um, I promise I will get back right away. 
Um, another thing, if you are a frequent portal user, um, if you follow us on Twitter, that's a great way to, you know, instantly basically find out when we've added stuff. We um, update that several times a week, but uh, you can reach out to us anytime with any questions that come up. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sure. Nick, uh, I, I want to acknowledge Nick Napoli on the line. He is the uh, manager not only of the Mid-Atlantic portal, but of the Northeast portal, and um, probably has some corrections or some things that I might have missed. Is there anything you want to add out there, Nick? Hey, I appreciate that, Carl. Or was that perfect? Perfect. <laughs> I was lurking in the background. You were perfect. That was awesome. Thanks for doing this. Absolutely. All right. If there is no other questions, it is just about noon. We finished right on time. Um, and I'll have a recording of this webinar on the portal news page and in its mm -hmm. webinar section like I said, probably within the next day or two for sure. So uh, feel free to look for that and share it with anybody out there who might be interested. Um, but beyond that, thank you all for coming and reach out to us with any further questions or comments. Take care. Thank you so much. You bet. Thanks, Carl. Bye-bye.